Looking at the vectors here, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be finding the area of this triangle right here using vectors. Now, we know how to do this using regular methods, like we can find the area of a triangle using normal methods, half base times height. I want to find area of a triangle using other formulas, but now we're going to be using a vector approach. Now, in order to use a vector approach, what I like to start with is get a little sketch of what is going on. So I want to find the area of this triangle. So I'm just going to sketch it. So at the point one zero, one zero would be somewhere right here. This is P. And then we have, um, this is Q minus two one, minus two one would be somewhere here. That would be Q. And then you have R is four two, four over here, two somewhere here. So maybe R is somewhere right here. It's not so accurate. Well, this would be your triangle. And you want to find this area. So to find the area of this triangle, using a vector method, it's gonna be cross product. So choose a central point. I'm gonna choose P as my central point. So the area of this triangle, if I choose P as my central point, then the area is going to be equal to, the area is gonna be equal to a half the cross product, half the cross product of, a half the modulus of the cross product of, we're choosing P as a central point, so it's gonna be PQ cross QR. PQ cross PR. That's going to be the area of this triangle using a vector method. So let us evaluate the area and see if this is what we actually get. Let us copy this. We're going to use a vector method and do this question. All right, so here we go. Let us do this question. So find the area of this triangle using a vector method. Remember we said that the area is going to be equal to a half the norm of norm or the magnitude of PQ cross PR. That is what we said, PQ cross PR. So first thing that we need to do is we need to find what is PQ and what is PR. So let's do that in black right here. So let's put a box where we're gonna find PQ cross PR and First, we have to find is what is going to be OR minus OP. And so we find vector PR, OR minus OP. Yeah, man. So vector OR is given by 4, 2, that's OR minus OP, where OP is 1, 0. And so that works out to be 4 minus 1 is 3, and 2 minus 0 is 2. So that is vector PR, 3, 2. The next thing we need to do is find vector PQ. To find vector PQ, vector PQ is going to be equal to OQ minus OP. OQ minus OP. That is vector PQ, OQ minus OP. Now what is vector OQ? Vector OQ is minus two, one, minus OP, and OP is the same, one, zero. So now minus two, minus one, you're gonna go minus two, minus one is minus three, and one minus zero is zero. Nice. So this is, this is PQ now, all right? This is PQ. So all we need to do now is find the cross product. So to find the cross product now, 
So now we have PR and PQ, I need to find a cross product. Now remember, how do we find cross product of PQ and PR? We have to remember that by definition, the cross product A cross B, remember A cross B, this is the definition, it's equal to the norm of A times the norm of B times the sine of theta, where theta is the angle between the two vectors. This is definition of cross product. So now we need to find the angle between these two vectors now. Let's find the angle between these two vectors. The first thing, to find the angle between these two vectors, this is a lot of work. The cos of theta is gonna be equal to their dot product. The dot product of these two, it is three, two dot minus three, zero over the length or the modulus of three, two. And the magnitude of three, two is gonna be the square root of three square plus two square. And then this is being multiplied by the square root of, this is now multiplied by the square root of three square. So when we work this out now, what we're gonna get is three dot minus three is minus nine. So that's minus nine over, now three square, three square plus two square, square rooted, so that is, times nine, we get the square root of 117. So now we can find the angle now between them. And so theta is gonna work out to be equal to, we take cos inverse of that, cos inverse of minus nine over the square root of 117. And so when we do this, what we're gonna get is, we we'll work that out, minus nine over 107, square root of minus nine divided by the square root of 117, cos inverse of that. So cos inverse of minus nine over the square root of 117, and I get 146.3 degrees. 146.3 degrees. Since this is what we're getting now, now we're able to work out, let's change the color now. And so the area is gonna work out to be a half. Now remember to find cross product, it's actually the magnitude of P times Q, magnitude of PQ times the magnitude of PR times the sine of theta. This is how we find the area of this triangle. So when you work it out, what you're gonna get is the area of this triangle using vector method is a half magnitude of PQ we found the magnitude of PQ to be three square plus four square square rooted, that's the square root of 13. And the magnitude of PR, we found that to be square root of nine, which is three. Then we we'll multiply that by the sine of 146.3 degrees. So we work this out that will give us the area. Nice. So let us work that out. The square root of 13 times three times half times the sine of, the sine of 146.3. We work that out and I'm getting three, I'm getting three, 3.0. So that's the area of this triangle, 3.0 units square. But let me just check this again. Maybe my calculator is off the square root of 13 times a half times three times the sine of 146.3. Yep, so we get 3.0.
and that's the area 3.0 units now what if what if you wanted to verify it i'm going to verify it of course using the geometer sketchpad i could verify it using regular triangle method but i'm going to verify it another way here so let's go to the geometer sketchpad going to draw a graph here so we're going to insert the points p which is one zero p is the point one zero here is one zero p is the point one zero so i'm going to label it as p that's p then i'm going to look for q q is the point minus two one minus two one is right here this is the point q so i'm going to label that as q and then now um we have the point we have the point r which is four two so let's label four two four two is right here so let me label this point as r so this is the triangle that is going to be formed Use this now. We're do our triangle here. Oh, not right here. Let me go back from PQ to P to R. This is our triangle that is formed. That's our triangle. Now look, find the area. Well. Did we get all the coordinates right? This is one, zero, two, three, four, minus one, minus two, one. What was Q minus two, one? Q is minus two, one. Uh, and this is saying the area is, let me show the coordinates to actually see. Coordinates. Minus two, minus two, one. P. Let me see the coordinates for P. One, zero, which is right. See the coordinates for R. R should be four, two. R is indeed 4.2 and it's giving us an area of 4.4 or 4.5. So let's go back to our calculation. All right, so it's a half, a half of PQ cross PR. We found PR, four minus one is three, two minus zero is two. Um, PQ now is OQ minus OP, that's minus. Oh, here is the mistake. So that is why it's good to check our answer. One minus zero is one. That is why I like to check our answer. One minus zero is one. Shame on me. One minus zero is one. And so that means the magnitude over here is not, it's gonna be, this is now gonna be minus three, one. That's why it's important to check our answers. I made a big blue right there. And three dot, this is minus one. And then two dot one, that's plus two. Then this part now is going to be now three square plus two square plus three square plus one square. And then that's gonna be square root of 10 times the square root of 13. So that's now going to be square root of 10 times the square root of 13 as a square root of 130. So this works out now to be, so my mistake, my mistake, minus seven over the square root of 130, this should be 130.
All right, and so now we do this now, minus seven over one, square root of 130. We take cos inverse, we get 127.8. This is 127.8. And you get 127.8 degrees. What we're gonna do now is write that right here, 127.8. One hundred and twenty-seven point eight degrees. So now we work this out. Sine of one twenty-seven point eight times a half times. Oh, by the way, this was now square root of ten. PR magnitude is square root of ten. We have to fix that as well. So we have a half. A half the square root of one hundred and thirty times the sine of one twenty-seven point eight. Half times square root of 130 times the sine of 127.8. Now we get our answer. I get 4.5. So now we're good. We get 4.5. Beautiful. 4.5 units square. Nice. So we get 4.5. So this is the area using a vector method. Nice and easy, soft. So this is the answer. Made a little bloopers, my bad. We'll try not to do it again. Little bloopers, one minus zero is zero. That's crazy, one minus zero is one. So these things do happen sometime when you're doing math. You sometimes overlook something like that. So now we get the area that they have. Nice. All right, and remember we also found, we also found when we were doing it that the angle between the angle at PU found is 127.8. Look how I'm gonna show you that that is indeed true. The angle at PU says 127.8. If you measure that angle, right, don't wanna bold everything. Mm -hmm. If we measure the angle at P, because remember it's the angle at P we were using, you're gonna see, we got 127.8, they have 128.5. The reason why it's not the exact same is because we don't have these at the exact position where they should be. Q should be at minus two one, but it's hard to get it exactly there. Minus two one, this is the closest I can get it. R should be slightly over to two, but it's hard to get it slightly over to two. This is the best that I can do, but it's 127.8. All right, it's very hard to get them at the exact points, but yeah, we can see that we got the angle now. We can see that we get the area, right? And that's how you find the area of a triangle using vector method. All right, so now we know how to find the area of a triangle using vector method. We know how to find the area of a triangle using other methods as well. Nice easy, soft.